Hey y'all, welcome, welcome. So today we're going to be talking about don't fall for psychological tricks from men. Now, I get a lot of questions from y'all. And a lot of these questions uh, pertain to how guys treat you on dates, the questions that they ask you, and et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of them are psychological tricks to play with your mind, to get you to be more submissive uh, subconsciously. So I'm going to help you guys out with some of these okey-doke tricks that some of these guys are playing you with, especially the ones you meet online, okay? So let's start off with one of the main types of issues that a lot of women have when it comes to, you know, talking to these guys, okay? Are you talking to guys online or you meet someone and they're always asking you to send them pics of you? Send me some pics, send me some pics, send me some pics. That is a subconscious way of allowing you to easily send yourself or give yourself away to someone that you've just met. Now, if you are on social media, if you put pics and post pics all the time, that's your choice and that's your personal social media. Now, the psychology behind someone asking you to continuously send them pics and then pics and then pics, it's a conditioning and a training to have you do what they want and give yourself to them, submit. So this is why I always say, go get you a picture that you've already posted somewhere on social media and send him the same picture that everybody else see on social media. You do not give them new pics. If they want to see you in person, they got to pay. That means they have to set up a date. They got to actually go out, put some effort in and meet you and spend some money on you. Okay, stop sending these stupid pictures. I know we all look good. They know we look good. But what's the point if you have social media and they can go see all your the pictures they want, screenshot it, whatever. Stop falling for the psychological okie doke. Tell him to send you some pictures, okay, of some money. Say, send me a picture of your house, your car, your boat, your bank account statement, and see what he say. <laughs> anyway, he's probably ain't gonna he's probably gonna say no. So if you want to get back and do the same thing in reverse, tell him to send you pictures of expensive things or gifts that you want or things that you want from him. Okay. If you really think about it. <laughs> Another thing that these guys do psychologically to subconsciously trick you is um, when they stand you up on a date. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Some of y'all already know. When you stand someone up, it means you fill them with emotions that make you doubt yourself. So you're not good enough for me to even meet. I'm going to stand you up. This is why I always tell you ladies, when y'all meet guys online or y'all or these guys stand you up, they're not standing you up. You need to respond and tell them, look, I already have plans. I was going to cancel them for you, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep them. Or you say, oh, that's okay. I already have some, you know, somebody that wants to go to dinner tonight. So no worries. Or you, or, or you always have a backup plan or you always have something else to do. You're never getting stood up. You are simply putting your current plans um, temporarily on hold just in case they want to court you. <laughs> okay. You never get stood up ever. Okay. You always like, you always got that backup plan. You always know people where you go. You always have some other plans to do. You always got somebody waiting. Always. Okay. This way, it's like by the end of the evening, you probably having a better time with whatever else, you know, plans that you had. And you're probably thankful that that person did not show up. <laughs> and they, and you showed up for yourself. You know what I'm saying? 
because you have everything already. And they were just privileged to uh, even get an invite. But since they did not arrive, then, you know, it's like no big deal on to the next. OK, so you need to always keep this in your mind. These are psychological tricks. And if you fall for them, think about how how much you're going to start thinking about that person and why this and how terrible your evening's going to go after that and how you're going to feel the next day and all that stuff. When you could have just had everything in place already to have the best time ever. OK, despite that person. OK, so. Uh, a lot of people will break plans and not necessarily stand you up, but break the plans is the, literally the same thing. OK, so when they break plans with you, because a lot of you always say, oh, they're breaking plans with the other. Oh, they never had plans with you, ma'am. <laughs> OK, they were stringing you along. So you can say, oh, my gosh, I totally forgot about our date. Oh, my gosh, I forgot, totally forgot that we even had a date. Thanks for reminding me, but you know what? It's okay because I had already planned something else. That's what you need to start saying, ladies, instead of getting all mad and sing, saying he's going to make it up to you. Make what up to you? The fact that he never planned to go in the first place or that he was stringing you along. How about this? Oh, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll see. And don't, don't act like you want to go on a second date. Be like, oh, don't worry about it, but we'll see. We'll see. I totally forgot anyway, so... You put them back in their place, okay? You do not allow them to tap you emotionally, energetically, or any kind of way. You just laugh and, and be like, you tried it. You were tried, did not succeed, okay? Another way that guys psychologically try to, you know, uh, trick you is, okay, so another another way is like holding out. When they're when when they're promising you things and then they say, well, you got to do something for me or, you know, I can't do that unless you do this. And this is like conditions. Right. If they have too many conditions, they then they don't see you as, you know, the woman that they want to court. They're seeing you as, you know, give me this and give me that. Give me this or and I'll give you that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know what? Psh, forget that. Forget it. If you can't meet the standards, just say you can't, you know, <laughs> that's the response that you need to get. If you can't meet the standards, just say you can't. Don't turn it back around on me. Either you can or you can't. If you can't move out the way, let somebody else meet these standards, because obviously you have conditions, you need help. You can't do it on your own. So guess what? Goodbye. Sorry, I have this like weird green screen. They have it. So that's what I'm saying. Don't allow people to say, oh, you have too many things that you're never going to find what you're looking for. You have too many things to meet. And da -da 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 -da. Well, if you can't do it, say you can't do it and move along, sir. Don't be sitting over here complaining about the price. If you ain't got it, move. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay, basically that's what you're saying. And so, like I said, guys will try to make it seem like that you're doing too much, you're putting too much uh, pressure on them, or you are requiring too much of them. No, we're not. We're requiring what we require. It has nothing to do with you as a man, or it has nothing to do with you personally. Don't, don't go anywhere that you can't afford, period. So if you let them know like this, they have less ability to psychologically trick you or, you know, subconsciously try to mess with you. So all you got to do is like, you know, I'm sorry. There's no discussion here. I said what I said. If you don't like it, there's somebody else that might bend to your bend to your needs. <laughs> oh, Andrea Sparks Park. Appreciate it. Girl. Send me nice um, cash. Sprinkle, sprinkle, appreciate you, girl. So stop falling for these okie dokes. Don't even discuss or try to even uh, compromise with these guys who think they got you. They don't have you. <laughs> they want you at a discount, but they can't have you. 
All right. All right. And always, okay, so sometimes people um, will tell you, uh, you know, they'll start having all these excuses of why they can't do something. Then, you know, instead of getting upset or mad or concerned, just like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll find another way. When a woman says, don't worry about it, I will find another way. That means another man. And they will quickly try to figure out how they can do whatever you need them to do for you. Especially if you stop answering the phone because you're looking for that other way. Stop responding to their messages while you are looking for that other way. And when you find that other way, if you actually need it that other way, then when you when they continuously call or text you and ask, did you get did you find the way that you were looking for or did you get your problem solved? You can say, you know what? I sure did. Can I call you back? <laughs> or is it OK if I message you later and then click? OK, do not stay on the phone with that person. Do not listen to their excuse. Do not entertain them anymore after they did not help you or give you what you need. OK. After they told you to hope, hope you find another way, dismiss them and have them waiting for your call forever. <laughs> OK. <laughs> we be waiting by the phone and nobody going to ever call. And if they continuously try to contact you and, you know, date you just like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. I don't think it's going to work out. But good luck to you in finding whatever you're looking for. You know, dismiss them instead of you, instead of being wondering why this didn't work. This didn't work. This didn't work. This didn't work. It, it worked for you because obviously they were going to waste your time anyway. <laughs> and this is how you have to start looking at these situations. Y'all are looking at it from the victim's perspective. You have to look at it from the one in charge. Okay. You are in charge. The woman is in charge of the courting. Why? Because the man courts you and you decide or you're in charge of if he's worthy of you or not. And you can tell or now you could tell because I'm telling you how to, um, you know, see their psychological tricks from a mile away. And you can quickly nip them in the bud, dismiss them or, you know, not even acknowledge them so that they fail right in their tracks. Okay. Don't sit there and get sucked into it. Laugh and be like, you tried it, but guess what? I already have backup plans. Oh, I'm to I'm so I totally forgot about our date. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm glad because I would have definitely been late and had to cancel anyway. That means you could care less. He was less important. He didn't do nothing. He, he couldn't stand you up because you, wouldn't, you don't even remember that you had the date. Also, um, another way that guys try to bring your... Uh, what, you know, your, your insecurity out is asking you the dumb questions. Like I've always discussed. Okay. Uh, how many, what's your body count or what are you going to offer me? Or what do you bring to the table? Just like, Oh, I don't bring anything to the table. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't answer questions that are that invasive for people that I don't know who aren't able to even pay my bills, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's such a personal question for someone that you've just met. Wow. Do you ask all the dates or all your dates such personal questions? And do they answer? So now you're separating yourself from the lower level that he dates. You're separating yourself from the type of woman he's dating. You're taking yourself out of the type of women that fall for the okie doke. So you're saying, and women answer these questions? Wow. Well, I'm so sorry to disappoint you, but I don't answer those type of questions and no one ever asks them. I'm, I'm just, you know, that's, that's so strange how, you know, most women will sit there and answer that. Anyway, I don't answer such personal questions to people that I barely know. You know, I thought dates were a time to, uh, you know, talk and, you know, with each other and, you know, connect on a, on, in a way, I didn't think it was an interrogation process. I, like I'm not really interviewing to be in a relationship. So those questions are 
a little bit invasive. <laughs> so now he knows that you don't want no relationship with him. You ain't going to answer his dumb, low level life questions and you're too good for him. You're telling him already, I'm too good for you. And I don't know what type of women you used to, but you, you done stumbled upon somebody way out your league. That's all you're saying. And they're going to try to clean it up. They're going to try to clean it up a little bit. Well, that's, you know, they're going to, they're going to start stuttering and fumbling all, and you're going to throw them totally off their game. And then you're, then it's your turn. Either they're going to totally change and do whatever you need them to do and follow your lead because now they think you know more, you're more classy, you're more advanced. So they're going to start following your lead. You know, okay, well, you know, you, you don't have to ask those questions. That was silly. So what do you want to drink? Then you name an expensive drink or something that you like. <laughs> oh, you know, I like champagne or I like, you know, wine or I like this or I like that. Um, then he'll be trying to buy wine and buy you whatever you want to make you forget that he just acted so stupid at low level. So you have to flip it. You have to always make sure that you're above and the best. And also that you can see what they're doing subconsciously as well. <laughs> okay. You got to know both sides. If you don't know, then that's when you fall for the psychological tricks. I, I mean, when you see somebody trying to do something from a mile away, sometimes you see how far that they're going to go. And then you totally use it against them. <laughs> okay. And that's how a lot of women get what they really want. Because when guys think they have a little bit of game, but women have 10 times as much game, that's when they get everything that they want. That's why, like I said, if you're dumb and don't know any better, then you better find somebody who knows who know better to tell you. <laughs> or you better do your own research. Sorry, you better do your own research and figure it out. So, you said this chestnut checkers? Uh -huh. Exactly. You said, what if he lies of having a girlfriend? It doesn't matter what he has. Like, and here's another psychological thing. When a man lies about him having a girlfriend or a wife or whatever, whatever. Let me tell you why they, t they lie or say that they don't. Because in their mind, they don't. <laughs> okay. Either that woman is out of their league or he's already conquered her. So he doesn't see her as an equal nor a challenge. Therefore, he's not going to acknowledge that. Either she's just the domestic help or someone he's in a, a legal contract with. Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't acknowledge her in the way that he wants to acknowledge a woman. So she's no longer a challenge to him. Let's just say that. <laughs> Therefore, you already know that doesn't mean that he's going to leave or that, you know, he's going to, you know, leave or anything. It means that it's, it's, it's kind of null and he can't really go any further with her at this point in time. He wants to experience something different. So you make him work to even think he can get close to the experience, which means you make him buy drinks, which means you make him take you shopping, which means you make him do this, which means you make him to do that. And then it'll be up to you whether you want to move forward or not, but he's going to work for the challenge that you're presenting him. Okay. So you can just the same way as he's not acknowledging the other person in his life, you don't acknowledge that he even has a chance until he proves that he could have a chance. And then, if you decide not to deal with him, then at least you still got something out of it. <laughs> at the same time, you know. Is ghosting one of men's mind tricks and which and would it work if I ignored him back? Sparkle, sparkle. Uh oh, Rowan. Sparkle, sparkle. I feel like ghosting, if you don't even 
rate if he's not even on your radar you won't even realize he ghosted you you know what i'm saying you, because you'll be too busy with other people just like if someone were to try to stand you up but you don't even real you didn't realize you even had a date because you forgot it's the same thing so that's why it's important for women to always have something going always have others or other plans or other things or people waiting you know what I'm saying? So, for example, if you're dating two or three guys and one ghosts you, right, or does not call you or try to respond to you or anything, right, you're so busy talking to the other ones, getting gifts from the other ones. You're so busy going out with the other ones, making plans with the other ones. You don't even realize this one hasn't called and, and, until you've got a, a little spare moment. Then you're like, oh, dang, I wonder what happened to this one. They must be busy. Um, then you're like, okay, but you're not, it doesn't upset you. Why? Because you're too busy and you don't even kind of, and then you kind of like, oh, good. Cause you know, I don't really like him that much anyway. And I don't think that that was going to work out anyway. So maybe they kind of figured it out and left on their own. And then now you just have room for a different one. <laughs> okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's how you have to think about it. Okay. Now I'll just have room for a, a better one. So instead of taking the victim mentality or as if something is wrong with you or as if some guy ghosted you, you're literally like just not you, you literally didn't even realize because you were already ghosting them because you had other things going. And the only reason that you were dealing with them in the uh, in the first place is because they were making the contact. You weren't. So I say if. You were make, if they were always making contact with you and you weren't making contact with them, then how could they ghost you? Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. That's how you got to think about it. Is there a way to get power back after sleeping with a potential after date? He took you shopping, spent 500 after he tries to. Sleep. Okay, you don't ever try to get any type of thing, anything back. Okay, because you should always already have more in place elsewhere. If you got $500 and all that kind of stuff, don't try to hold on, you know, that's how, that's how men try to control you by dangling stuff and then trying to take it away and then dangling it and take it away. Have somebody else that always going to give you the same thing or more at the same time. This is how, because men, okay. Another thing, men don't like to compete. If there's no competition, they know you're going to come crawling back and asking questions like that. You know, how do I get him back? What, what do I do? He, he stopped doing this. Or da, da, da. If you if, if there's always somebody else to replace them. Then either they have to really prove themselves to you or not. OK, because you always got something else happening, always have something else happening. Maybe that way, if they if they decide not to deal with you or if something changes, it's not a big deal. You just yeah, shift. <laughs> and it bothers them more when you don't even notice, realize, or need them. Okay. <laughs> so, and if this is why, if you're desperate as a woman, then you shouldn't date if you are desperate. You need to get all of that fixed mentally first before you start dating if you are not desperate when you start dating it's totally different <laughs> okay it is totally different if you are not desperate because you have your choice your pick and you don't have to respond you don't have to answer no questions you can always just do something different so it's called having lots of options or it's called not falling for the psychological okie doke. Or it's called choosing yourself over some man trying to play games that he's not even good at. That's always what it's going to be. Okay. <laughs> you said desperation attracts dust. It sure does. You never do anything desperate. You never make decisions when you're desperate. Never. Ever. Always make decisions when you have more than enough. 
whether that means you already have a sugar daddy or you already have a provider or you already have your own money, you always make decisions and answer questions and, and whatever, whatever, when you don't need whoever you're speaking with. Okay, so you have to come off as if they are there um, to try to get you to approve of them. It's not the other way around. Okay. <laughs> Is it bad to answer all the questions if you answer in a sly way? It only depends on what they're trying to accomplish by asking those questions. And if if the um, if their reasoning um, for asking the questions was to trick you psychologically and they didn't, then it's fine. Okay. It's even better if you do the do what they try to do to you, to them. Okay. All right. <laughs> what if a man what if you used a man for fun and you're done having fun? Now what? Then if you if you're done having fun with him, then you're done having fun with him. If you want fun somewhere else, go have fun somewhere else. If you want to have fun with him again and he wants to have fun with you, then that's whatever. But at the same time, who cares? <laughs> it's like, you know, if you are. It's it's like clothes in a closet. You want to wear it today or you, you want to wear it next week or you don't want to wear it again. That's your option. What to do if he has a girlfriend beside me, besides you? How can you get rid of her? He's 74. Girl, you're 26. We're in a relationship. Girl, don't count her as no girlfriend. <laughs> How is 74 got, got another girlfriend and cheating? You're, let him have her. He ain't got that much longer to live. Okay, Let him have his little dream. I'm like, okay, you know, if you're 74, you could pull that off. Good for you. Because you know what? You ain't got that much longer to live, so I'm going to let you go ahead and keep that. For now, because we all going to outlive you. Okay? <laughs> like, y'all be like, y'all, y'all. here's the thing. When, when a person gets of a certain age, they love last couple of years of freedom and happiness. Okay, let, let them have a little, let them live. Because they ain't going to be living too much longer. Just let them have them years and whatever they're trying to. If you really think back, after they're gone, it's gonna be like, well, at least I let him have what he wanted. <laughs> unless that person, you know, unless you don't want to share, then, you know, Find something else to occupy or spend a, spend their money so that they can't afford the other one. Either way. Spend their money so they can't afford the other one. All right. <laughs> yeah, today I'm looking like, you know, my normal look. And yesterday I was like more glammed. I had to take care of some, some stuff this morning so I didn't have time to get all glam for you guys. Plus the maids came and cleaned and they were in where I do my makeup so I didn't have time to get extras for y'all today. Okay, so this is what y'all getting. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, um, you said at the beginning, what should I do when he's asking for sex? If you don't want to give him any sex, then ask for something bigger. Like, you know what? I would love to go there with you intimately. And then start naming expensive places like in this hotel, in this state or this country with a bottle of name, some expensive champagne, just like really make seem like having sex with you is going to make him work in order to even get to the place where you even want to. And if a man is going to do all those things just to sleep with you, 
he's what you're doing psychologically to him is making yourself a priority, a valuable priority that allows and makes him work for that sex and makes him think, does he really want you that bad enough to go through all of that? Or does he just want to see how easy it is to get it from you? So you, you try to make them work a lot more for even getting close to the idea of him, you know, getting anything. That's if you want to hold off, you know. So set up the scenario where, you know, when, when I get all my debt paid off, when I'm comfortable, when I can relax enough to actually enjoy those types of of, you know, intimate <laughs> trysts with someone that I'm really connected to who, you know, who thinks I'm worth it. So basically what you're telling him is we're going to have to be very connected. You're going to have to put in a lot of work and my debt going to have to be paid. Otherwise, I don't know what you're talking about. Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> oh, appreciate that, Vic. Also, Elena, sparkle, sparkle. What if you live in your... Like, what if you, what if he lived with her 50 year old and just dates me? What? What if he lived with her, her 15 or I think you're like mistyping. So I don't know what you're saying, but I feel like you need to re-ask the question because it doesn't make sense. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Shira, please tell me how to seduce a man who doesn't know me. I need tricks. Girl. How to seduce a man who don't know you. But how are you supposed to seduce him if he don't know you, man? That don't make no sense. Okay. Just reconnect with, you just reconnected with a successful male friend from your childhood. Last time you dated, I was clingy. He wants to see you again. How do you get the spark back? You don't get the spark back. He's supposed to get it back for you. Spark, spark. You're supposed to get it back for you. Like I said, y'all are working in reverse. Don't work in reverse. Okay. You don't want him. He wants you. It's not, it's, y'all are doing everything backwards. Okay. Okay. You so said you started a fate, a FWB. He tested you for six months. Now we're finally dating, but expects me to tell him everything I did when we were friends with benefits. Girl, I expect you to do what? How much he paying you to tell you all that? To tell him all that. Okay, that information costs money. Tell them that. You know how every time you give them people your phone number when you go shopping uh, and they lie and say, oh, this is for, you know, uh, updates and stuff like that. They really just sell your information to people that's going to call you and try to sell you something else. So why should your information be free if other people are paying for it? You know what I'm saying? You don't give away no free information. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Or you can lie. Give them the wrong phone number. Give them a bad email address. I'll be throwing too much. Everything that happens while we were friends with benefits, guess what? We benefited. That's what happens. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> you benefited and I benefited. The whole point of friends with benefits is you don't get, you're not privy to that information. Now that if you are in a relationship, you're only privy to the relationship information. Okay, it don't work like that. Flip the script, ma'am, because men think, okay, well, we can have friends with benefits, but they ain't telling you nothing at the same time. So, you know, when you change the relationship, everything else changes. You don't get that info. You wanted that info in the first place? Should have been a relationship in the first place. And tell them just like that and dismiss. Okay, what if he lives with other women? 15 years, okay. Already and just dating you. He... She is like a wife. How to get rid of her? Thank you a lot. Um, honestly, if a man has been living with a woman for 15 years, and you got to spend all his money up, and you got to get her to kick him out or leave him. That means you got to get him in trouble. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You got to get her to dismiss him because he's too lazy or can't afford to dismiss her. You got to get her to dismiss him. Okay. Y'all thinking backwards, as usual. You can't really get rid of her. He has to want to get rid of her. 
her. He has to want to leave or she has to want to get rid of him. If she ain't got rid of him by now, obviously he's doing something for her that's more valuable than she cares to dismiss. So what you have to do is find a way to make yourself more valuable than she is. Sprinkle, sprinkle, or, or something like that, you know. Uh, it's going to be hard, especially if they've been there so long. But if you can do it, you know. <laughs> you could try. I hope that, you know, I hope that he's just not stringing you along. Otherwise, that's why you need to have more than one. So you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> what do you do with him if he's a womanizer? How to get his attention? Girl, why would you want the attention of a womanizer? The whole point of a man being a womanizer is to get the woman's attention. What you doing? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Backwards thinking. They got y'all messed up. <laughs> Psychologically, when men really try to trick women, they know how y'all think from emotions, from the victim mentality. Stop. If he's a womanizer, he should be trying to get your attention, man. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If he can't, guess what? You ain't the woman he trying to womanize. Okay. All right. Uh, get some wrong with like, ha ha ha, what? But some, I don't know. All right, anyway, other psychological tricks that men use. Other psychological tricks, okay. When they try to tell you that you're at like mid or average or you're not all that. That's another psychological trick. It's like, okay, and neither are you. <laughs> Look at them straight now, and neither are you. Glad we cleared and got that out the way. Now what? <laughs> So when a person tells you you're not all that, you're not this, you're not that, they're trying to say that they're better than you and they are all that. So you quickly tell them the same thing. Well, you're not either. Because if, if you were, you wouldn't need to tell me anything. Because I would already know. You wouldn't have to tell me. <laughs> you're not all that either, sir. Okay, so now what? <laughs> what are we going to do? Be not all that together? <laughs> or would you like to go find someone out of your league? Because I definitely feel I'm out of your league anyway. But if you don't think so, I don't. I want you to be happy. <laughs> so you need to go find someone who you think is out of your league to try to get, you know, wherever you're trying to go with this. Because obviously... You don't think I'm out of your league. And I definitely know that you're not all that. So what are we going to do? <laughs> you got to stop them right in their tracks. Okay. And, and remember, like, you know, you can, a woman can always transform and make herself look the way she wants to look. A man's bank account, it kind of stay the same unless he find multiple streams. You know what I'm saying? So you can level yourself up at any time. You can look plain, plain Jane, or what Nicki Minaj say? What, what Nicki Minaj say? Plain Jane? No, she said bust down or plain Jane. She got options. <laughs> You could be a, you could bust down plain drink or you got options. 
Okay, don't don't let men tell you anything. You running the show, ma'am. <laughs> Should you keep the potential from before as you are building your roster? Also, do you have any strategies for the first date to prevent being desperate? Okay. You don't accept the first date unless you're not desperate. You don't accept the first date unless you're talking to other guys. Okay. You don't accept none of that unless you already got other things in place. That means it's, it's kind of like having multiple streams of income, right? It's the same thing. So unless you have other things in place, you need multiple streams, period. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So should you keep your potential from before? Should you keep all your streams of income? <laughs> or do you set one down while you do another stream of income? The whole point of having several streams of income is to have more money. What are y'all doing? So if you are not desperate, that's what having several streams of income means. You're not desperate for money. You're all your eggs aren't in one basket, ma'am. So what are you going to do? If all your eggs aren't in one basket, you're not desperate. And what? What else are you not? You're not letting go of the other streams of income? And what else? <laughs> Exactly. Why do y'all have to pick and choose? Why can't y'all do what y'all want? Okay. Why? Ma'am. Oh, what happened? Okay, here we go. Uh -uh. Try to see some. If y'all are gonna okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, Evie. If y'all are gonna ask me questions that millions of women ask every day, do what you want and what's best for you. I keep telling y'all this. If you need permission to do what you want to do. Or if you're unsure of what to do, what makes the most money? What's going to get you more in your pocket? That's where we're always going to go. Unless you have, like, and, and, and if you're not desperate. When you are not desperate, you can answer your own questions a lot of times. If you are in a predicament where you need help and things like that, and you're asking me what to do, I'm going to tell you to do what's best for you financially as long as you're not desperate and always have another plan in place and several streams of income with anything, relationships or business. Okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. You said, what are you... What if he live far and say he don't want nothing with you because you live far? Take a hint and a clue that long distance relationships are stupid in the first place. <laughs> okay. Do you believe thinking about money all the time is low vibrational? No. I don't. I believe that thinking about whatever you choose to think about is called free will. And it's the highest vibration that you can have because you have choices. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. Will he leave a 30-year marriage? Yeah. Them tax, I don't know, is he, them tax benefits working for him? A lot of people don't leave because of tax benefits. Medicare, Social Security, I don't know, child. You better, you better find out. 
that's something that y'all don't know. Like when some when a couple has been married that long together, something really bad has to happen for them to break up because they're too connected through the government, through the IRS, through property, through children, through grandchildren. Come on now. <laughs> you if, if he's old enough to be a grandpa, you're gonna have you gonna have little kids saying, Why you why grandpa divorced grandma? You know, it's it's kind of hard to explain. Plus, if they are a family strong in tradition, you know what I'm saying? It's his family will or some other family member may be betrayed, or he could have um, you know, what you call it, uh, ties with the other family or business with the other family. And most people don't like breaking up money or businesses. So therefore, just make him, just get what you need out of the situation and have another person that's going to give you what you want, who's an unattached, okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. That means like, have a boyfriend. Sprinkle, sprinkle. He calls you a witch for the power I have on him. Is there a psychological meaning behind a man that cares for me and tries to fight it? Girl, who cares what he calling you? Is he, you calling yourself Kate? Okay. There's worse things to be called, ma'am. Just get your money from him, like I always say. I always get my money. You can call me whatever you want as long as you ain't calling me broke. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Do you believe in karma? Nope, I don't. Because if I was from a part of the world that didn't believe in karma and I was raised never to believe in that, then how could I believe in it at all? You know what I'm saying? Plus, if you are a Catholic, you know, all you got to do is go on a little priest confessional and say, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Uh, and then he's going to tell you to sing that Tupac song, Hail Mary. And then guess what? Everything is, is peachy. Everything good again. So, I mean, change your religion if you fear something in another religion. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Or don't have any religion at all. And therefore, you don't have to face any of those consequences unless you put them upon yourself. Okay? <laughs> Think Jada feel guilty for dealing with Tupac? No, she's sitting up there still repping and claiming. <laughs> I see what I did and I said what I said. Do something about it. Period. Free will. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I ain't laughing. But if she's saying it, who cares? Okay. You said, do married men feel karma for chasing women? <laughs> uh, you need to ask them that. Why y'all? See, women always want to take the blame. That's what you've been conditioned to do. That is the oldest psychological trick that religion does to women. That's why I don't follow religion. It's patriarchal. <laughs> y'all sitting up here worried about something that haven't even happened yet, that you won't even do because you're living in a victim mentality because you're scared of everything because you don't know who you are. Well, if you don't know who you are, then keep guessing until you figure it out and get your money, like I do. <laughs> okay. You said, Will is not being held hostage. Exactly. They could do. See, okay, so I don't like, I, I'm just going to say this. Psychologically, if you want to win a psychological game, you have to play that psychological game until you win. <laughs> if one stops playing the psychological game, the other one can't win. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Your provider got two grandchildren. His wife is never leaving and you enjoy your freedom. Are you going on a date with a new guy tonight? Thank you, Shira, for the knowledge. You are leveling up. All right. You already know. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thanks for the donation. <laughs> <laughs> you 
He said the game never ends. Actually, if you stop playing it, okay. So like y'all video, y'all people that keep playing video games, you put the game on pause. Then what? <laughs> Go do something else, right? So I'm gonna put this game on pause. I'll do something else in the meantime. I'm cool handle some other business and do what I got to do over here, okay? The game might not ever end, but if it's on pause, then it's on pause. <laughs> you might not continue. You see, there's the difference. Like, y'all know how people are talking about, like, something is infinite and stuff like that? Not if it's on pause. <laughs> What if what if your husband look at Insta models while you and you are pregnant? Okay, then I would put that in the normal category. <laughs> okay, but what would you do? Ask for more money, ask for a push gift, start looking at bigger cars, you know, and use that to guilt him into buying it for you. What are you doing? Tap his tap his resources, man. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay, use it for your advantage. Get you a bigger house. Get you a nicer car. And tell him he better do it. Uh-oh. Sprinkle, sprinkle. J a Z T. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Appreciate that. See, women are trained to react emotionally. And make decisions that take away from themselves when you need to be trained to act for, you know, what's best for you logically and add to your finances. Y'all been doing it wrong. If your reaction doesn't cause you to get gain more money, then your reaction is wrong. <laughs> if you think like that, you always going to get what you want. Okay, so even though certain people have not done a lot, people stay relevant by doing certain things, you know, um, and they're not desperate, but they're not also going to continue to follow rules or society either. They're going to do what they want. And those types of people, especially women, when women decide they're not going to follow society's rules and they're going to do whatever they want and they say what they said. That is when people start really respecting them, noticing them, and giving them exactly what they want. Why? Because that's how it's supposed to be. And, when, and the more people wait, that wake up, the more people are going to start living the lives that they want. So, ladies, wake up. Don't fall for the psychological okie doke get what you want out of whoever is trying to do what they're trying to do because that's what I do. <laughs> and make sure you you don't approach any situation desperate. What See, people can't affect you if you are not desperate. That's how I stay so unbothered because I am never desperate. I have everything I need. When I deal with, with, when I deal with anybody, I already have everything I need, don't even need to be dealing with them. That is a choice. So when you when you are dealing with men, you always need options and you always need to know that they are the fortunate one for you to even be giving them the time to prove themselves to you. That is how you need to move, ladies. Anything else is desperate, pygmisha. Anything else is easy to trick. Anything else is easy to manipulate. You don't want to be manipulated, tricked, or any of those things. Make sure you don't need whatever you're dealing with. Or make sure you got others in place to get what you need so that you don't have to, ex you know, show that desperation. Because desperation makes people want to exploit you even more. Okay? So, Desperation makes people want to exploit you even more. So don't even show any. Say, oh, no big deal. It's okay. I forgot that we had a date anyway. I actually had already made plans with somebody else that I was going to have to break. I am so glad. I guess someone does that. 
tries to break plans with you. Just do, just do that, man. Okay, some women are addicted to despair and chaos. It's their source of attention. Um, if you like chaos, then it, then it needs to be an act instead of real. Okay, you need to come up with fake scenarios, fake things to get into, not real ones, because that way you're in control of them. Okay. There you go. Mm hmm. You said, how about husbands playing such games? If husbands play games, if, as a wife, you should be smarter than your husband anyway, ma'am. And you, you should get exactly what you want out of the situation already. And you, it's easier because you know him. <laughs> if he playing games, it's just to set up for you to win, ma'am. Or put, put him on pause until you get what you want or do something else. Okay, how to ask a man money who's all ready to spend on traveling but doesn't buy you any gift? He's 48 rich. Okay, because you know what? Traveling is called frequent fire, flyer miles. And you can rack them up by paying bills with a credit card. So if he ain't spending no money and he just tr tr flying you somewhere, they don't count. Because they go towards hotels too, just as just as well as a flight. If he's not spending no real money, if he ain't paying no bills, then he don't deserve no vacation and no travel with you. Sparkle, sparkle. Okay. Make sure you get all your bills paid before you agree to you help him use up his frequent flyer miles, man. Because they're free. All right, sparkle, sparkle. How do you respect, how to get respect from men when they know when we know of their other women and still date them? Okay, you don't need respect from those guys, ma'am. What you need is respect from other men who respect you naturally. Because how, they're not even respectful to their own wife. Why would they respect you? <laughs> you need to get respect from elsewhere. From yourself first. You respect yourself for dealing with someone for the reason that you're dealing with them. I respect myself enough to know why exactly I'm dealing with this person because it's to get a certain goal match. And they, you know, you don't need respect from somebody that doesn't respect themselves or their wives. You need respect from yourself to say, I did that. I got exactly what I wanted out of the situation. And other people will respect you for being honest and telling your truth and, and meeting your goals and getting what you want. You know, you think politicians sit up here and look for respect from people? No. Respect is earned and ain't given. So when, when he realized how much money he didn't spent on you, and how you still don't care what he's doing because you're worried about yourself and doing your thing, that's when the respect will start to grow. Like, oh man, she got it. <laughs> Sometimes people respect how you respect yourself more. And they ain't desperate. Okay. Um, what could be some scenarios to make them know you still have options as wealthy in provider as him? Girl, by not caring enough, by being nonchalant, by having a life, by having other plans, by not being bothered, <laughs> by staying unbothered. It means it's, a, it's an unspoken thing, right? If, if it's unspoken, if you're not trying to prove that you got options or tell people you got options because you're not desperate, because your plan is in place to get whatever you need from them and you're not going to risk that being, you know, exposed just by trying to prove that you have options. Let makes them wonder and think more. 
Why is, why is it she calling or texting me as much? Why does she just get mad if I can't, you know, meet her when I said I could? You make their mind is more powerful in their own mind than whatever it is that you could suggest to them. Okay. So when you don't tell them anything, they're going to jump to conclusions. And it's easier and less work for you. So let them jump to conclusions. You ain't, they know you got options. If you look good and they got money, they don't think any other man else is going to recognize. <laughs> so it's common sense that you have other options. You don't have to prove anything. You stick to your plan and your goal and stay unbothered. That's how they know because you're not desperate. Mm -hmm. How do you cut off a guy that you no longer want to talk to? You don't cut anybody off. Um, if they keep calling and calling and calling, just don't answer. What's the point? You don't want to talk to them. You ain't got the answer. Let them keep calling. And that is a psychological trick if you allow them to keep calling you. Because one day you might just answer and tell them what you want and they're going to give it up. <laughs> okay? Y'all need to start thinking more logically and strategically instead of emotionally. Tell us more ways to ask for money, please. Go watch the other video, ma'am. Sprinkle, sprinkle. The one I did yesterday. If we need a part two, maybe I'll do a part two. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Thank you for the donation now. Okay. This guy wanted to meet you in another country. All accommodations paid by except for flight tickets. Haven't met him. Girl, I'm not doing all of that for no man. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you want to see me, guess what? You finna jump through hoops in a circus? To see some man you ain't never met? What kind of trained pu puppet animal are you? I don't care what he want. What do you want, ma'am? Sprinkle, sprinkle. He's trying to see how many hoops you gonna jump through. How many you gonna jump through, ma'am? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh-oh, normal. Appreciate it. How many hoops you gonna jump through to go see some man you ain't never met in a different country? Look, if you if the man want to meet you, he gonna find a way to come find you. He ain't, you ain't finna jump through no type of hoops, ma'am. Okay. From you, sprinkle, sprinkle. I appreciate you. How to be unbothered by having more than one options and never being desperate. That's how. Is the best way I can explain it, an easy way I can explain it is, okay, so you know how you have like a jar, like a lot of people have like a jar of change that they just throw their change into, their money into, they have a big old jar or a piggy bank, or whatever y'all have, all right, you got a bunch of money, right, you got a bunch of change, you got a bunch of coins, um, and somebody is like trying to lure you, or you know, how little kids like, Oh, if you go do this for me, I'll give you a quarter. That little kid got a whole thing of change in his room or her room. So he's going to turn that down flat out. No, I ain't going to do all of that. I got I, I got a giant piggy bank. I got a giant jar chain. I don't need to run no errand. Go get you a glass of water for no quarter. No, for, not even for no dollar because I got four quarters. That equal a dollar. Little kids know better. Okay. They, they want real money. Before they even do it, you got it. They go. They start negotiating early, so they're not desperate. They're not gonna be your little puppet or pit. So therefore, don't be so desperate to even consider something that stupid. That's what I was wondering. That's what I'm gonna tell you. How to date provider that is very short and ugly. The same way uh, you date somebody that's attractive and broke. Sprinkle, sprinkle. The shame gonna go where to go. The shame go. 
but it de definitely won't go on your bills and your lifestyle. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. Uh, let me ask you a question, ma'am. Would you rather be seen out with a cute Dusty with his arms around you while you at the register paying or a short man in front of you at the nice luxury store with his nice credit card or his nice bank card or his cash paying for a lot of stuff that you picked out? Which, which one you rather, ma'am? Or would you rather wake up with all your bills paid, no debt, and don't got to go to work and look down when you see him? Or would you rather get up at the crack of dawn, fight traffic while you're dusty, stay home, and play video games? You choose. I know those are the two exact extremes and opposites, but still, y'all know what I mean. <laughs> I'm not dealing with no dust. Okay. Single men treat you like a disposable option. Married men are loyal and generous. Why is this? I want to get married, but obviously to a single man. Okay. Single men are single because they want to be single. That means... They're in their single era. When you're in your single era, that means women are disposable. <laughs> okay. When a man is married, they already know women aren't disposable because they're not in their single era anymore. You get it? So if you're trying to find a man who is single to approach you and not treat you as someone disposable, you need to find someone that's already been married or someone older who is no longer uh, immature, sprinkle, sprinkle. You're dealing with too many youngsters. Okay. <laughs> you all, what? If a man asks any questions that is invasive or intended to make you imp Press him, don't answer it immediately. Instead, find on to ask him the same question. Another way to ask him the same question. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you said as an attorney, you're loving this whole courtroom layout. <laughs> you silly. Thank you. Okay, so 20-year-old men always say you're beautiful. You take care of yourself, body. Don't date any dusties. However, no man ever approaches me. Um, Okay, you're 20, okay. But the men always say, okay, that you take care of yourself, blah, 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 but no man ever approach you. They only stare at me. Am I in the wrong environment? What should I do? Yeah, you don't have that main character energy, man. Sparkle, sparkle, gotta get the main character energy. Main character energy want, makes men want to be in your world. Okay? If, if a man walks into wherever you're at, like you're at a bar, restaurant, wherever you're at, if a man walks in there and see you having the best time, like your world is the place to be, they're going to approach. If you look like your world ain't the place to be, they're not approaching. You don't have the main character energy. So you need to look like if this person knows you, their world is automatically going to be more exciting, improved, you know, uh, different, some, you know, an adventure or whatever. But if you just sitting there scrolling on your phone, humdrum, you know, waiting for someone to make your world better, it ain't going to happen. Your world already got to be all of that. So that means you need to look like you don't need anybody to approach you. You need to act like you already got what you want. So because when people see that you already got what you want, you don't need them and you have the best time of your life. They want some of that. OK, they want what you got. And that's called main character energy. They want it to rub off on them and their world. So if you are not looking like that, it's harder to get approached. I'm hard. That look, I do what I want. I'm having the best time with or without a man wherever I go. That's how it needs to. That's how you need to live. And people want that. And that's when they approach. If they approach, if that's what they want. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. What if you don't follow through with a promise or something that you actually, okay. Promise is a comfort to a fool. 
So you was a fool. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't listen to promises. Actions only. You gonna do something? When it get done, it's done. I don't hold people to promises. Okay? If people can't even keep contracts, marriage vows, what makes you think a man gonna keep a promise? Fool. Foolishness. That's what makes you think a man gonna keep a promise. Fools only believe promises. Okay? That's why when you go to the car dealership, you can't promise to pay the note. You got to sign contracts with legal consequences because promises are stupid. <laughs> That's why on my video yesterday, if he promised to give you some money, make sure the date is right next to the ATM machine. Wherever y'all eating at, make sure you can see the ATM machine from the restaurant door. So you're going to walk right on over and make that promise into a reality. Okay? Don't let people promise you something. And take it to heart or believe it. Promise yourself that promises are comforts to fools. Okay? Actions only. I don't care about no promise. <laughs> Where the money? Sprinkle, sprinkle. What do you do about provider men who says that he wants no savings because all money is in business? Oh, he got no savings because all money is in business. He intends to sell later. I'm not listening to that. If he can't pay my bills, I don't. I don't. If he can't give me the lifestyle I want, then we don't need to be talking. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> all right. Period. I don't, don't give me no financial excuses. Give me some finances. All right. He can explain away all he wants. If ain't no money in my hand, if I ain't got what I need, then I don't really care. That's how y'all need to start treating these people. Because if they coming up with all these excuses of why they ain't got no savings, well, you know, what if an emergency occurs? What are we going to do? You ain't financially responsible enough to have a, a, some type of savings or something, you know, to help yourself or help those that are in need of, you know, whoever you love or whatever, whatever, then you, you ain't no good. <laughs> not for me. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I, I'm not trying to hear all that because this one over here, the, the, my other option over here, he got plenty. So I guess I'm going to have to go see him about some, some bills. You have a good old night. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You don't have to say that to them, but you can be thinking it. Options aren't desperate. You got options. You are never desperate. Be like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. I was, you know what? It's getting late anyway. Let's call it night. Girl, it'll be like seven o'clock. You ready for the next one? No. Don't deal with that. Uh oh. Do rabble, sprinkle, sprinkle. Appreciate you. Okay. If he's providing for you, because you said it's like a, when you call a man a provider man, that means he's already providing. If he doesn't have a savings, but he's already providing, then hopefully he has 401k retirement. Hopefully he got something. AARP and AFLAC. If you're older. <laughs> Insurance, all of that. Okay. Your man is cooking for you. Okay, good for you, girl. If, if you come up with excuses of why you can't have sex, he'll leave. No, he won't. Not if somebody fake dies. What he, what he gonna do? Leave? Because girl, y'all gotta learn how to lie good. If you can't lie, then you can't get paid. Y'all already know that. You got to come up with the best excuse or you got to come up with a scenario where you say you are going to give it to him if certain conditions are met. I, I just explained this earlier. You know what? I can't wait. Just lie. Just be lying. I can't wait to get on top of you and do all these things to you. But I'm going to need. I have always imagined it in this type of hotel. I want to be, you know, wearing this. We need this type of champagne. I want it to be this. I want it to be that. I want to be wearing this. So he already knows it's going to cost him a grip. Cost him some money. But you never said no. You ain't never said no. And I want to be debt free. That's my goal. I mean, he got to pay off them credit card bills, whatever. If you want to get to what you, what you got. <laughs> Okay. 
So you never say no. You just give him a bunch of obstacles in the way to knock out. And then guess what? And you still don't want to give him none? I'm like, you're fake. Somebody is going to suddenly pass away and you're not going to be able to be in the mood. <laughs> and you might need some money to go on a flight to, you know, attend the funeral and things like that. And when you get back, he's still going to be waiting. And you're going to need some time to mourn and all that good stuff. And guess what? He got to start all over. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So, y'all got to learn how to lie, entice, string along, just like these guys do. They got y'all. They do the same thing to y'all. Be promising y'all ATM money. You be on the phone with them all night, sending them pictures and all this kind of crap. Waiting on your the promise to come true. Oh, he can't make it because he got to work or da, 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 da. oh well you know um, he got money but he can't he ain't got no savings and all this kind of stuff he, they do the same thing to y'all but y'all can't think of how to do the same thing to them while getting all the things that you want no y'all can't because y'all are trained to be the victim and the one to suffer so stop stop allowing that do what you want it's, if you're a woman and you are the main character then that's supposed to make sense. You're supposed to get what you want. It's your movie. Not the other way around. Otherwise, you're making him the main character and the story about him, and it's not. It's about you, ma'am. So why, would, why wouldn't you get what you want? Why wouldn't you have backup options? Why wouldn't the story turn to your favor? <laughs> okay. Y'all talk about Jada. Uh, who's the main character in that marriage? Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. And I see a lot of people talking bad about, you know, because I was scrolling through Instagram and I see a lot of people mad talking about it. That's not y'all's relationship. Let her let them run their relationship how they want to run. And, just, and and who cares? <laughs> just because y'all don't know how to be main character don't mean other people don't. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> say, say it with me. Main character energy. Get some. You see, how do you separate yourself like a luxury brand from all the cute pygmishas by not dealing with any man that would deal with a pygmisha? Okay. Like I said earlier in the video, all you got to do is not answer the questions that men that are used to dealing with pygmisha will ask. Don't answer them. Separate yourself by how you respond and treat yourself how you respond to men or how you don't respond to men and how you treat yourself. That's how you separate yourself. Just like a luxury store. Okay. They don't have racks full of stuff jump jumbled together with price tags and other price tags over the other price tags. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. They got snooty people at the door to greet you. And look you up and down. Make sure you know you're supposed to be there because you got enough to buy something up in here. That's number one. So if they don't like they don't they're not going to be very welcoming to every walk of life. They're going to give you the side eye. If you looking like you can't afford nothing up in there. They're not going to rush to help you unless they are trying to hurry up and get you up out of there. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know how it is. You're going to be like they're going to give you a sarcastic tone like. I may help you. That means, what are you doing in here? But if you come in there dressed like you looking good, like you can afford whatever you want in the store, they're like, they're going to give you a compliment. Oh my gosh, I like your shoes. They're not going to be like, hi, hi, may I help you? So they can get back to talking to their friend or scrolling. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, I love your bag. Can I help you find something? 
That's how you know, okay? You don't entertain, you don't look the part, you don't act the part, you don't answer the questions that a pygmisha would ask, I mean, would answer. You don't look like a pygmisha and you do not date like a pygmisha. That's how. <laughs> Gotta have that main character energy, man. Gotta walk in there like, okay, impress me if you can. That's main character energy. He said, why can't men be direct and honest with women? Because then they be women too. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Sorry. You just be a lesbian then at that point. Okay. Thoughts on dating a bisexual man? He spends money on me, levels me up, and owns his own business. Okay. As long as we don't have to sleep together, I'm fine with that. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. As long as he tells you, as long as you ain't got to sleep with him, who cares? A sparkle, sparkle. Because like some women, they don't know. They might not have a. They might not have the choice to say no. I don't want to sleep with you because you're that way or whatever, whatever. But if if they're if they're gonna tell you or if you know already, then y'all just gonna be like, just be his beard, ma'am, or his goatee, since so he's not fully gay. Just be his little goatee. Spark, sparkle. <laughs> All right. You said you only ate, date bisexuals. B-U-Y. B-U-Y sexuals. I know. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. You said bisexual. Exactly. With B-U-Y. Instead of bi. B-I. Okay. There's no hate for bisexuality. Either. To me, if you're a bisexual man, you just greedy. You greedy. <laughs> or you want to cheat with anything that'll t mess with you. So that's just my opinion. Doesn't mean it's fact. Doesn't mean it's true. That's just how I see bisexual men. <laughs> Okay, not fact, but my perspective. <laughs> like y'all can't y'all pick a team, y'all set it down, pick something. To me, it's like whoever will mess with me is who I'll, you know, you might as well just be trisexual. That I means you'll try anything. <laughs> so Nothing, you know, nothing against anyone. But to me, it's a little bit greedy. <laughs> and a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit greedy. Unless you're not sleeping with the woman or the man. Like, if you're just flirting with a man to get his money and never sleep with him. Like, women don't really trust men anyway to begin with. So, that just makes it worse. So, if the man is bisexual, then it should be a platonic friendship versus a sexual relationship, especially with women. Because if you are, and this is just my opinion, okay? If you are sleeping with a man and then you come back to sleep with a woman and you want to sleep with a man, or if you're in a relationship with a man and you're in a relationship with a woman, you ain't going to know how to act or how to think. You're going to be thoroughly confused. So, you know what I'm saying? Pick a team or beat a beard or the goatee. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's my opinion. I, I'd rather you be gay and be, and be your beard. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. You ain't gonna get none over here. All right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care what it means. What I'm saying is either I'm your beard or you straight. That's how it's gonna be.
I, I, I'm a good actress. I'll be up here. I pretend you're the straightest man in the world. There ain't going to be nothing going on. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. Thoughts on man giving you 2000 to get your own apartment, but ask, asking for it to be girl, then he ain't giving it to you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. He's loaning it to you. And if a man gives you a loan, then he ain't your man. Don't take it. Get it from somebody else and that doesn't ask you to pay them back. Okay? That's an insult. Sprinkle, sprinkle. What kind of man got money to give and be going to be waiting around on you to pay them back? A broke man. So, no. The answer is... Don't accept it. Say, like, no, I'm not going to be able to pay you back. Um, if you're not able to give it, just don't worry about it. I'll find another way. That means I'm going to go find somebody else. <laughs> All right. See, men who say they got to pay them back don't really like you. They don't like you at all. Okay. They just want some or they want you to know that they don't like you that much. That's why they ask you to pay them back or they don't have to give. Okay, either way, if a man fixes his mouth to ask you to pay something back, he didn't even want to give it to you. He just want to finish using you until he's done. So don't ever accept no type of loan from no man you're sleeping with. If you, he can't get it, dismiss him and go get it elsewhere where somebody can give it to you. All right. Because some of y'all are so desperate, y'all will take a loan from a man and then wonder why he don't want you, he won't marry you or nothing. Because he never liked you in the first place enough to even give you the money that you actually needed. Forget that. <laughs> never. I would be insulted and he, he would never hear from me again. Okay. Men invented chasing the bag. You can't outplay one that easily little one. Uh -huh. Well, men and also invented chasing women. And if a woman is chasing the bag and a man is chasing the woman, guess who get into the bag first, man, sir? Sprinkle, sprinkle. We already won. I don't know what you're thinking about. <laughs> okay. You might have chased the bag, sir. You might have chased the bag. That means you got a bag. And if you want to chase a woman and you, the woman already know you got a bag. If she lets you catch her, then she got a bag. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> then she catch you. How do you get a man to fly you out? I wouldn't. Okay, they got the flat to me, ma'am. I'm the main character. If we gonna go somewhere, we going somewhere together. Okay. Hence why it goes against nature to chase a man. Exactly. Look, I'm not flying out to see no dude. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that is Pygmisha low level. They got to come see you. Are you not worth it? Are you not the main character? You going to jump through hoops, go through security checks, pay for extra luggage, get on a plane, fly hours, stand there, try to wait for your luggage, get it, get an Uber or wait for him to pick you up, go to some hotel room or some, the house and have him pressure you, you for sex. And you going to take you shopping or nothing. You going to do all of that. Are you going to make him come to you? To show that he likes you and wants you and you're just not an escort that hops on planes. Spark a free one. Spark a spark. No, ma'am. If you don't have frequent flyer miles, y'all need to start figuring out how to get frequent flyer miles on your credit card. So y'all don't think being flued out is something special. Okay. All right. Y'all go sign up for that frequent flyer mileage on your credit cards or your bank cards, or whatever y'all use to pay for stuff with. Go go sign up for that. And every time you spend money, guess what? You do a little frequent flyer miles increasing. You can fly yourself anywhere. 
Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. Now, if you if you're at the pigmisha level, okay, and you want a man to fly you out because you ain't never been on a plane, then you need to find you you need to look like some arm candy, and you need to find an old man or a man with some money, and tell him you ain't never been there before. See what he say. Oh, I ain't never been where you live before. Make sure you meet him online, and he probably fly out a woman every other week. But make sure you get a line. You gotta, you know, unless he's trying to rack up his frequent flyer miles from the last time he spent them. We don't know. But I would be insulted if someone wanted to fly me out. I'm like, no, you can come meet me. We can fly somewhere else together that I, you know, would like to actually visit. <laughs> so, like, I fly myself out. Don't need to be flewed out. You want to take me to a destination? Get on a plane. Come over here, and we go together. Period. Otherwise, no thanks. <laughs> um. How do you get your man to put you as an authorized user? Tell him. Put me as an authorized user. And then, you know, he will if he wants on. All right. What does it mean when a guy suddenly cuts contacts with you, but you do nothing to him? It means you're lucky because um, it means you're paying too much attention to that man. And it also means you're lucky because he's no longer wasting your time because he didn't like you anyway. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh, also probably means he's married or something, man. And his woman came back or took him back. Duh. <laughs> Y'all just start looking at the signs. So psychologically, if a man does everything for you and then doesn't do anything back, his woman came back, ma'am. His woman is there. Okay, he had to cut all ties because his woman is there now. She took him back. Here you go. Y'all really think men are just going to just give you everything, invest into you, and then all of a sudden, you know, show zero interest? Girl, his, his girlfriend or his wife came back, girl. She, she forgave him. All right. <laughs> Y'all done. <laughs> all right. What if a man want a friendship with you and try to get your attention Next, okay. Well, then he got to spend money to have any type of friendship, man. Smoke, smoke. That's how he get attention, spending money. All right. And isn't that how most men get attention from women? Spend money. Gotta spend money. Okay. You said the wife checked out the bank statements and said time to cut. Her. He said time to cut her off. <laughs> How do you know when they are playing psychological games with you? When they're speaking. If they think they got any type of game. Any type of game is a psychological game, ma'am. Whether they're good at it or not, it doesn't matter. You're not going to give them the chance. So, <laughs> watch the beginning of the video, ma'am. You will definitely get at least four or five psychological tricks that uh, are being played on lots of women and how to deal with them and make them work in your favor. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. So Dusty in here commenting. You said all you hoes is fired. That's why yes, niggas finna just smash and dash nowadays. Girl, y'all be smashing and dashing in prison. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So we don't care. Have fun. Okay, if that's all you can afford to do, sir. 
pick me shot there waiting to get smashed. You know, in between your prison sentences. That's why all this bisexual stuff coming out. Like, did you date a bisexual man? You mean a man that been to prison? <laughs> nope. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> a man that will smash and dash because he ain't got no money. I guess, you know, that's who you're talking about. A man who refers to women as hoes. I'm sure he comes from good stock. I'm sure you would love to procreate with that and say, yep, that's your daddy. Sir, you are not the prize. Never was, never will be. Couldn't if be if you tried. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Go back to whatever hole you done crawled up out of. <laughs> okay. His mama would be proud. I'm sure she would. She probably somewhere in the class. That's my baby. <laughs> All right. Men take that. We can't get. We are the prize. Exactly. Like who want that? Who want that representing? Ugh. Stay where you was. <laughs> Okay. You said a pick me won't won't you? <laughs> he done already ate, got his full meal, woke up from his good night's sleep of non bill pain. Now he over here while she at work. Yeah, nope. <laughs> nope. Sorry, sir. You're in the wrong place. You know how, you know, when you walk into one of those luxury stores and they rush up right before you can even take three steps in and say, I don't may hump you. Like, and what they're really trying to say is you don't belong here. Get up out of here. <laughs> Goodbye. So. See, we wouldn't have to deal with this. Ladies, if you choose a place with valet parking and drinks that are $20 and up, you never have to deal with that because they can't afford it unless they work in there. Then you can get them fired. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Why are some moms like obsessed with their sons, Shira? It's a problem. I see it. Well, I don't know. I don't have no sons. I've got... Beautiful daughters. I don't have male children. So I don't know. I couldn't tell you. You asked in the wrong one. Okay. Let me ask y'all a question. Are mothers as attached to their gay sons as they are to their straight sons? You really want to get psychological. Okay, then there's the answer to your question, man. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You can figure out the rest. So, when a woman or a mother is attached to her son, she was fulfilling, um, or he was fulfilling the the male role in the whole. Possibly, probably because there's no father. Okay. And if the father left, then she feels like, you know, she may have been abandoned or whatever, whatever. So she is psychologically substituting him in the place of his father or just any man. Because if you're a strong, able-bodied man and you can do stuff around the house and, you know, da 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 da, -da then that's what she got used to. So help her find a man or a boyfriend. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's the best thing I can do. Right now. Okay. Said mama boy is usually broke. Okay. 
He said mothers are attached to gay sons if dads are gone. Well, I don't know because I don't I don't have any male children, so I couldn't tell you. You'd have to ask someone that had male children. Because I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Who knows? So, never fall for the psychological tricks unless you know how to play them better. Then you can see how far that they're going to go and then you could make them work only in your favor. So, you know, or if y'all are both very smart and see that y'all both know you know what's happening or what's going on. Some some men actually do this unconsciously, and some do it consciously. So the one that keeps trying, let me give y'all a clue and a hint on who is doing it on purpose and who knows what they're doing. When a man continuously asks you to do something over and over, and and you've said no or you've made up excuses, they are conscious and aware of what it is they're trying to do. When they ask you once or twice and then move on to something different, a different subject or whatever, and it makes no big deal out of it, they're unconsciously doing it. Okay? So pay close attention because some people just do it unconsciously. Some people are very aware and are conscious of, you know, the psychological tricks that they're attempting. Thoughts on living in a mobile home park in 2023? Is this considered a dusty park? Mobile home park? Does he own the park? <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. The answer is no. Is that his office space? Does he have a home somewhere else? You know, I need, I need, I need to ask why is he there? Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Is it an experiment? <laughs> Is he filming it for some type of documentary? You know, is there money to be made by living there? What is the what, what is the real deal? You know what I'm saying? If not, and he's just choosing to live, how much is in his savings account? How much money is he worth? What's his net worth? Okay. I don't care where you live. What's your net worth? What's your, what's your net worth? How much you got? You spending? Because you don't have to stay there. You can get a, get a hotel, Airbnb, a rental. You ain't got to go to no trailer park, man. That's his experiment. <laughs> okay. If that doesn't say luxury. It just depends. I need the whole story. I need the whole story. Okay. Shira, how to get rid of a man who loaned you five years back and I am evading bill. Girl, a credit card company will give you credit and if you don't pay them back in seven years, they leave you alone or they sell your uh, account to a collection agency and you still ain't got to pay. And they keep reducing the bill lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. So the same way you hang up on them bill collectors, hang up on him, sprinkle, sprinkle. Not saying you have bill collectors, but what I'm saying is use the same concept. Okay. And plus, if you, if a man loans you something, you wasn't your man. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Have you been... I don't even know what that is, ma'am. Sprinkle, sprinkle. The, if you're asking me about other videos and people, I don't really watch other people's videos. Sorry. I'm only subscribed to, like, aesthetic videos and, you know, videos that teach stuff. Like, I don't really watch other YouTubers. I'm so I, no offense to anybody. Look, don't take no offense because I'm enough for myself. <laughs> when I get on YouTube, I want to relax and enjoy. I don't need extra, you know, 
I do this all day or hours, so I need something different. You know what I'm saying? It's working, it's working. What shit? But no, no shade to nobody. Okay. Um, and like I said, like it's whatever. Yeah, whatever it is, if it's psychological and they're doing it over and over and over, it's intentional. So make sure you pay attention to that. Okay. Um, can y'all please, okay, y'all should know by now on this channel, I don't really talk about other YouTubers. Don't want to, don't need to. So. If you all want to go watch other YouTubers, go watch other YouTubers. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> okay. You blocked this guy last month because you found out he had a girlfriend. Ooh. You've been receiving no caller ID calls, but one, but no one talks. He thinks it's a game. Why do you even answer the phone, ma'am? Sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't answer my phone. Shoot. If I make a call, I'm making a call. I don't answer my phone unless you in my contacts. I don't know why y'all think because the phone rang, you got to answer. Just like when the doorbell rang, you ain't got to answer. You can sit right there. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. You don't have, like y'all are too conditioned. Y'all are too conditioned. The phone ring, no caller ID. You pick up, nobody answer. Okay. Conditioned. Conditioned to still think about or guess who that is. Doorbell ring. You get up. Who is it? Go look through the little peephole or answer it. Okay. I'm not no dog. I don't answer to bells or rings. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> know this. The phone is to make calls and receive calls from those who you would like to receive calls from. If it is an emergency situation, it's not going to be on a no caller ID. Okay. So don't answer them. That's all you got to do. Hang it up. Or change your ringtone. Change it to something that makes you laugh when whoever calls. If you can program it under no caller ID. That way it's a pleasurable thing for you. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> okay. Y'all are obviously trying to like be messy, so I'm just going to delete y'all. Okay. Shira, what if your man invented, invited you, what, to shack up in a busted up trailer with seven other people to save some money for a house? It ain't free and he his kitchen is covered. Co Girl, if somebody did that, to me, I wouldn't even know it. You know why? Because I wouldn't be talking to anybody like that. So sorry. Sprinkle, sprinkle. It would never, ever happen to me. <laughs> I don't think anybody would dare ask me that question, period. Do you think anybody would ask me that question? You think anybody would risk the embarrassment or the answer that would come out of my mouth and ask me such a thing? <laughs> I don't think so. All right. Sprinkle, sprinkle. They wouldn't. Um. Don't answer the phone. Don't answer the door. Don't answer dumb questions. That's how you stay unbothered, man. Okay. Uh oh, V sparkle sparkle. Yes, appreciate that. Why do people at expensive bar ask you if you want to join their threesome? That's so classic. <laughs> uh, because, okay, so they're picking up desperate people. Okay. You're at an expensive bar. They obviously clock that you don't really belong there. So they think you're desperate. Look. Okay, I'll be like a threesome. I don't even want a twosome. 
get out of my face. Bye. <laughs>
you got to have options. If you don't, that's when you'll be faced with those types of, you know, issues. Because you, all you got to do is say, no, no, I'm so sorry. I'm not like that. When you're not desperate, you're not going to make dumb decisions. You got options. You don't make dumb decisions. When you have options, men know that you have options because you act like you have options and they feel that you're more valuable and they won't try to, you know, do something that you're uncomfortable with. Okay. If they want you to continue dating them. So never, ever be dumb. Never, ever be desperate for anything. If they can't give you money unless you sleep with them, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not like that. But guess what? You know, if you're not willing to help, you know, or if you don't really want, you know, our friendship, I understand. I'm really just the type of woman who, you know, thought dating older or this sort of man would be, you know, more beneficial to someone my age. Um, I really didn't mean anything by it, but, you know, good luck. Basically, you told him he old and broke. Pick a struggle, okay? <laughs> you asked the guy to send you money, but he the amount he sent is not what I expect. Darren, why you always... Okay, well then... The amount you tell somebody is not the amount you always going to get. So common sense will tell you, okay, to do what? <laughs> okay. Out of all the times, I don't know if you're a new subscriber, but if I know a man is not going to give me everything I want, what am I going to ask for? More. Way more. And when he says, okay, well, this is how much I'm going to give you. It's probably going to be what, exactly what I need or maybe a little bit more. Y'all know, y'all don't know how to auction. You know, y'all don't know how to auction starts off. It's like they start low and then they go super high. It's the opposite of that. You start super high and then you end up with you to where you really need. <laughs> okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You said ask for an unreasonable amount. Exactly. Yeah, I need to start thinking instead of being emotional. Don't play the victim. Play the game, the psychological game that they're trying to play on you. Why would a man give you less than what you asked for psychologically? When he know you need a certain amount, why would he give you less? So you could stay there and come back and beg for more, right? Why would a woman tell a man that she needs triple quadruple what she really needs so she could get more than what she need and don't need him no more sprinkle sprinkle why at the same time he thinking she still need him he the one left in the dark falling for the okie doke okay so flip it on him switch it and get what you need and show them that you better at playing the game that they tried to play on you oh. <laughs> because it's too easy it's too easy it just, it just means common sense use your common sense not your emotions know that a man is going know that a man is more desperate than a woman no matter how much money he got he desperate for something in between your legs know this so if he if you ask him for money and he doesn't give it all to you at the same time what does that mean that you're going to come back for more that you're not going anywhere and that he's going to string you alone, right? So knowing that, which is common sense now, because I'm telling you, and the, you know, knowing that quadruple whatever you need. And when you quadruple it, you're going to get double if he's giving you half. If he's giving you one fourth, then you're going to get exactly what you need, right, ma'am? Meanwhile, he still think he's stringing you along. You got everything you need and no longer desperate. And bonus points if he got options. Okay. He said we are the villains. No, we're not the villains. That is not a villain. That is common sense, ma'am. It's like playing pool, playing basketball. If you know from a certain angle, 
you got to throw at a certain angle or with a certain amount of strength, that's what you're going to do. You at a pool table, you're trying to shoot a ball, you know, you got to hit it off the corner to get it in the pocket over there instead of going straight for the pocket. That's what you got to do. It's called strategy. It's not called being a villain. It's called strategy. And this is another conditioning that they tell women that if you don't do what is expected and is right by a man, then you are the villain. Not, oh, you're smart. Not, oh, you're a genius. Not, oh, you have a good business mind. Not, oh, wow, you know, you think outside of the box. Not, oh my gosh, you're a boss. Oh my gosh, you you have great strategy. Oh my God, you should write a book. They don't say that to women. They just call her evil, Jezebel. You're going to end up alone. But when a man does it, oh, genius. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. That's because a man is stupid. And for him to even think that way, he has to get some praise. But when a woman thinks that way, it's natural and normal. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And y'all need to realize main character energy and being a woman and being told that she's wrong, evil, or a villain, or this or that for doing the exact same things that men try to do to us, y'all need to wake up. And of course we do it way better and we look better doing it. So you're not the villain unless the man is the villain. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So what are you? Just smart. <laughs> and better looking and better at it. You said best head gets you weird. Best bank account, too, sir. Because ain't no woman going down unless you got some money. Spark, spark, unless you stupid. <laughs> All right. Is it okay to date a dusty when you're young, you're 20? Girl, but let that be your last year of dating a dusty. Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> When you are of legal age to get into bars and places, let that be your last year of the dust, ma'am. Sparkle, sparkle. Okay, how to get your boyfriend to stop being friends with a person that trying to sabotage our relationship? Um, like the friend even more. Sprinkle, sparkle. He will get rid of the friend for you. Reverse psychology to him. So start to like that friend even more. Invite them over. Be very nice to them. Ask lots of questions about them to your man. Then he going to get rid of them because he think you like them. Uh-oh, Iana, sprinkle, sprinkle. Appreciate that. Send, send me some cash out. So you have to play the reverse role. Totally accept them. Be nice, nasty when they come over. Oh, and like they have on an ugly outfit. Like, oh my gosh, I love your outfit. Yes. Come on in. Fix your drink. So what are you doing today? Talk to him or you talk to the man. Your man going to get rid of him fast, quick and into her. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Why are you so nice to him? Why are you always talking about him? Why are you always asking me about him? Then, like... Well, he's just, you know, he seems lonely or da 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 da. Well, he's your friend and, you know, all da 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 da. Then you, you, you are totally mess up the friend's mind who's trying to sabotage the relationship because he's like, dang, does she like me? <laughs> well, maybe she ain't so bad after all. She has a good taste, you know, because a lot of guys. You know, they'll try to sabotage the relationship because they don't think that you're good enough for their friend or that you're taking their friend away or that they're jealous of you because they can't get anybody better. So you show interest in, oh, it's a girl? A oh, girl, why didn't you say that? 
You mean his ex-girlfriend or his future girlfriend or his friends with benefits or the woman he already didn't slept with? You mean her? Sprinkle, sprinkle. How to get rid of her? You get you one. That's a man. There you go. Okay. You get you a man. That's a friend. That looks good. That also has money. All right. If that's what you want. If you don't worry about her. He need to be worried about you. Because remember, you only have more to gain. Nothing to lose. If you look good, then you should be able to attract a good looking man friend with some money. That will spend. Then you're going to flip the worry on how, to, how he need to get rid of your friend. And he's going to be so focused on you, he ain't going to have time for his friend. Or he's going to get rid of her thinking that if he gets rid of her, you're going to get rid of him. So bring in, bring in somebody tall, some money. That look good. See what happens. You said, get you one. Yeah, hey, this is my friend. Yeah. We've been friends forever. Or we've been friends for a while, right? So you're psychologically messing with him now. He think y'all already did it because he didn't already did it with her, most likely. So he's trying to figure out if y'all already did it, if he's planning on doing it. If he's the backup man, when he get in an argument with you, are you going over his house? This, all this stuff going through his mind now. And guess what? He's going to get rid of her so you can get rid of him, period. Okay. What are some things a woman can do to go from this girlfriend status to wife? So basically for the man to propose marriage, making him invest more. Um, you got to make him spend more. The more money a man spends on a woman, the closer he is to marriage. Because men usually follow their money and their investments. Okay, so... Make him spend as much money as you can, especially if he's earning a lot. Um, and buy meaningful things instead of stupid stuff. So instead of purses and clothes and stuff, buy meaningful things. Cars, like big items. Cars, property, um, jewelry, things that increase in value or that are major purchases. You can also buy the little stuff in between, but the more major purchases that you buy when you're attached to somebody, the more likely you are going to get married. Okay. The okie doke little stupid stuff, purses and shoes and shopping sprays don't get you married. Okay. Make them buy you stuff. Or at least spend a lot of money on you. If you are too young or not ready for those larger things, or if you already have everything, make them spend a lot of money on sentimental things like jewelry or, you know, um, expensive trips and memorable things. Should you wear jeans with a sweater and heels to happy hour tonight or a dress? It all depends. Um, where are you going for happy hour? Is it appropriate for happy hour? If you're, wearing jeans and businessmen are going there for happy hour, they're going to see that you work in a place that allows jeans or that you didn't go to work at all. It's better to be mysterious than it is to be predictable or easy to read. So I'm going in a dress. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I go in jeans, then you already should be on a date with someone where y'all are comfortable enough to wear jeans out. But if you're looking for somebody to spend, you need to just keep your mystery, man. Okay. How do you let him know you got options without actually telling him? By looking like you got options, man. Acting like you got options, but never telling them you got options. Because a real, a, a woman with real options don't have to say nothing. The man already know. She looks the part. She acts the part. She don't answer no dumb questions. She's quick to dismiss you and she ain't desperate. That means she got plenty of options. And if you don't hurry up and try to impress her and, and, and prove your work, she's gone. <laughs> okay. 
how you get out of 50 50 bills by handing him all the bills and say this is here you go sprinkle sprinkle so here you go i'm done being your roommate if you want me as your woman you know what to do What if he doesn't get you things and it's been three months? Do you leave? Girl, three months? You should already have two more by the end. Girl, how you going to wait around for three months for somebody to get you something? Man, I already, already had it. It got more about other, from other people. What you doing? You so patient. I'm the type of woman like if I want something, if I can't get it for myself, look like, like for example, when I was younger, if I couldn't get something for myself and someone else wanted to give it to me, I would find somebody else to get it to me. I ain't gonna wait on you for three whole months. Okay. So of course, you know, would your job wait for you for three whole months to get them something that they asked you to get? <laughs> nope they'd be fired right all right then um you so said what if your man is very invested how do you stay on top in a bed what you talking about staying on top You had a guy get mad at me and say, when you don't get what you want, you back off what to teach. What you teach like a charm he's chasing, I'm ignoring. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle, yes. Yeah, he, he needs to learn how to give you what you want, right? Said, how do you respond to a sexual message? Ask him about his mama. Sparkle, sparkle. If you don't want, like, if you don't want him that way, change the subject to something that will totally turn him off. I'm so sorry. I should have said all of that. If you don't want that conversation to go in that direction, say something that totally turns him off. Or if you're trying to get his money, then tell him like, you know, okay, well, start talking about your bills and stuff, or your money, or some financial thing that you need help with. And put some like emojis or something. And then he's going to try to get all that out, done out of the way so that you could talk to him the way he wants you to talk to him. Then you'd be like... Copy and paste something, girl. You find a line. Sparkle, sparkle. All right. What should you say if he asks, how's your day going? Oh, my gosh. Good now that you've called. Yes. I was so, I was sitting here sad and thinking about something and worried about a lot of things. And then I hear your voice. And the day is now so much better. Then he going to be like, was wrong. Oh, I don't want to bore you or bother you with my issues. Well, you can tell me that you already know you're going to get some money, ma'am. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> uh, you said I do. Ha I do have patience, but not for men who never intend to give you no money. Here, I'm smart, smart guy. I can read them from a mile away. Is he giving money or not? What, what is his purpose in my life? I can. You can see that on a man from so far away just by talking to them a couple of times. You can see what they're there for, and what they can, and what they can't do, just by how they answer questions. So it's like, okay, if they're in a rush. If they're trying to rush you into anything, if they talk fast, if they over talk you, if they're in a rush, if they're trying to change the subject a lot, they just want to sleep with you. Okay. 
if they are very slow and giving you things, if they are very slow in doing things for you, they don't trust women at all and they've been burnt and they don't want you to do the same thing to them. So they're insecure. Okay. If a man is, um, you know, they seem good and giving you what you want when you ask for it. They don't seem to have an issue with it. Da, 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 da. That's the kind of man that is going to do more for you. Who you can probably depend on a little bit more than the other ones. The one that's probably going to stay with you the longest. Okay. But like I said, if somebody's rushing you, if you feel forced, rushed, or anything with any type of man, they're just trying to get some. So just change the subject. Or, you know, it's really up to you how you want to deal with these guys, but at least know what you're dealing with. <laughs> okay. How not to be triggered when a guy leave or find someone else abandonment play? Girl, because because you already got something else to go to. That's like having several cars. You got several cars, one in the shop, you don't even really care or notice because you got another one. Okay, have several. And when the car dealership call, be like, hey, your car ready? It's like, okay. Uh, can I pick it up tomorrow or the next day? Don't even want it. Don't even need it. You know, you got options, fam. If you don't have options and you're desperate, you're going to act desperate. You're going to be emotionally desperate. You're going to seek validation. You're going to seek all of the stupid stuff that you wouldn't be seeking if you had options. So get your options in order. Like he probably had his options in order. And you, both y'all won't have to look back or do anything. Options. <laughs> okay. Keep your options. Keep them. Don't get rid of them. Keep them. Keep them or know you can get more. And don't worry about other people and why they did this and why they did that. They did it because they did it. Why aren't you doing it? <laughs> you know, why ain't you doing what you want to do? Why is your value based on what they did to you? It ain't. Okay. If you just have to have, like, why did you do this to me? Da, 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 the same reason that you probably did it to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, because they have options. Because they, they already know you aren't the one. And you should already know that. Women should already know when you are dating someone, you are not the one unless you make yourself the one. If you didn't make yourself the one to that man, then who cares? <laughs> All right. If y'all keep wanting to go backwards and going backwards and going backwards to some man, y'all are still desperate. Y'all need options to where you don't even care. And they're, they need to be the ones seeking you out. They need to be the ones looking for you. If you keep looking for a man and say, is there options? Is there options? You're the desperate one. Who cares? If a man wants you, he will let you know. <laughs> Otherwise, no. Don't, don't keep seeking him out. Don't ask if there was another way. Who cares? If he's not asking himself that about you, then you wasting your time. Okay. How old were you when you started dating? Girl, I don't even remember. Like, I was in high school. High school, I wasn't one of them little fast girls that dated in junior high. So, yeah, high school. Okay, what do you do after argument with husband? Um, if I didn't get my way or if I didn't win the argument, which I always do. Um, if I, I won't start an argument unless I know I can win it, man. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So I would just win. <laughs> and get what I want. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. Don't start one if you can't win it, ma'am. That's it. 
find another strategic way to get what you want. Do you think friends with benefits can become a relationship? Um, if y'all both wanted each other in the first place, but was too scared to say so, perhaps. But if one just really wanted the friends with the benefits and the other one really didn't, then probably not. Because that means one likes the other one way more than the other one. So unless he likes you way more, probably not. And you could just be friends and have benefits with other people who got money that will do what you need them to do. <laughs> but that's about it. Sparkle, sparkle. What do you do about a man that always asks you to send them pictures? Watch the beginning of this video, ma'am. I already covered that. Telling y'all it's psychological. Conditioning you to give yourself over easily when they ask. Okay. It's an image of you that they ask for over and over. It's a conditioning to give yourself to them when they ask easily. Psychological. So. <laughs> Send them a picture of you on social media that they have already probably seen. Okay. There you go. This is the one that's on Instagram that you've already seen. If you want more pics, you know, I'll see you when we when we go out in person. We can take a pic together. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. What makes her special that all they all got? What make your mama special, sir? Spark, spark. She got one too that you came out of. What makes your mother special? Why do why does anybody love her? Why does somebody create you with her? What made her so special? There's the answer to your question. Okay, that's what makes her special. <laughs> How to get rid of your what? How to get rid of your friends, bat s boyfriend girl? Why is that your concern? Are you in love with your friend? Let her learn her lesson, ma'am. Because <laughs> she might be with him for a whole nother reason. You never know. But that's not your call. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Ways to level up when pregnant. Take care of yourself, but less secure while pregnant. Okay. Are you single and pregnant? Or are you pregnant where demand is funding you and you ain't got to work? Because that, you know, I, I couldn't tell you. If you. First of all, if you are pregnant and you have someone taking care of you, great. You're you're in the, the best position. If you don't, then stop. Don't even thinking about any of that. You should already stay leveled up, period, whether you're pregnant or not. You should already be whoever you're going to be already, whether you're pregnant or not. That means whoever you are, if you take care of yourself, if you love who you are, if you, you know, look good everywhere you go, always, don't matter if you're pregnant or not, continue to do that. You know what I'm saying? If it if you're motivated because you were left pregnant or whoever got you pregnant don't want you no more or whatever, whatever if that's the only reason you're leveling up, well, you're leveling up for the wrong reason. So I would say take some time and, you know, get your priorities in order. And, you know, after your child is born, you're going to have to level up in any way even more. And so have a goal and focus on whatever that goal is. For you and your child and your future. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. You said die alone. Who, who are you supposed to die with? You going to die holding hands with somebody, sir? I'm just curious. Who you going? You holding hands with somebody? Uh, Y'all are silly. The worst thing, the psychological thing that men try to say, die alone. Okay. 
I was born alone. Who, who, who? That's not a threat. You want somebody seeing you convulsing and taking your last breath? You know, most women won't die alone. But most men do. So, just so y'all know. I don't deal with no baby daddy. You, you, I'm not having your baby if you ain't my husband. Period. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Unless you're a millionaire. Then I'm going to deal with your lawyers. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I ain't dealing with you. I don't mess with nothing broke or difficult. You, you in or you out. <laughs> That's just what it is. I can't tell you how to deal with some baby daddy unless he's got money. Deal with his lawyer. Okay. I'm just telling you that. I'm telling you. Look. If he's rich, deal with his lawyer. That's not very difficult. Hopefully he is. Can you have plastic, can you have platonic male friends or do they always have to? What? Make a move on you. Can you have platonic male friends, man? Have you ever met a platonic male friend? Uh oh, God, it's wild red, sprinkle, sprinkle. If you ugly to them, yeah. And even when if they get drunk, they might put some, they might want to get some. So you know, you never know. <laughs> if you do only meet in public places during the daytime and don't try to look good. All right. <laughs> That's the best they got to so Somebody going to want each other if they if y'all look decent and got some money. All right. All right. If that's that's my cue. I got to go. But I'm going to tell y'all. Don't fall for the okie dog. If they're really trying to pressure you or, you know, force you to do something or continuously ask you something or insinuate something over and over, they're doing it on purpose. And if you don't catch it, you you know, now, now at least you know better. So, y'all have a good rest of your day. Y'all hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. If you dusty, find a job. Find some business. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And I'll see y'all in the next one.